Do you like 3D printing really big? Yeah. yeah. Do you like practical 3D prints? Yeah. yeah. Do you like sitting on things? Oh, yeah. yeah. Then you need your own 3D printed bar stool. Yes, this is my very own 3D printed bar stool, and it was printed on a hang printer. And if you don't know much about hang printing, I suggest you go check out this video here. Before we get into the specifics of how I got this done, let's go back and let's see the time lapse. <laughs> And here's what it looked like before I removed the supports. It did put down a bit of raft before it started the support, and then it put one inside and one outside to try to meet the foot rung, because it printed upside down. I did put some toothpicks on top of the support underneath the foot rung to help support the bridge. It wasn't the most elegant solution, but it did work in a pinch. And here's what it looks like after most of the support has been removed. I am going to go back through and clean it up with a heat gun a little bit just to get rid of some of the strings and a few of the uneven layers. The bulk of the support material weighed in right around 600 grams. And that gets us up to what the stool looks like currently. Now this model was created for this print by our good friend Ricky Tanner over at Tanner 3D. I did try some other models and scale them up, but the scaling didn't work out so well, so Ricky was kind enough to make me my own model at scale, and it was much appreciated. Now this print technically did fail. It's supposed to be four centimeters taller than it actually is. During the last five hours of the print, I came down and it was printing air, and I decided to call that good enough. Now where it stands, this model is 67 centimeters high and just shy of 48 centimeters wide. Again, the model was printed upside down, and I was printing on top of some particle board with hairspray on it. During the first part of the print, I did have the nozzle a little close, and I brought some of the print bed with me when I detached it, but that can be sanded off pretty easy. This was printed at a 0.75 millimeter layer height with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. It was printed at 30 millimeters a second. It has four top shells, four bottom shells, and four outer shells. It has 10% infill, and it weighs just over four kilograms. It took a little over five spools of filament to complete. And as far as print time, and this is a screen grab of my Octoprint instance right after I canceled the print. I was almost 191 hours in, and I had a little while longer to go. If I were to do this over again, I'd definitely do a lot of things differently. One, I would have created my own supports in Mesh Mixer instead of letting the slicer do it for me. The outcome of the model would have been much better. Two, I would have added a filament sensor before I got started, because staying up late at night waiting for the filament to run out is just ridiculous. And three, I'd add a battery backup, because worrying about the power blips for 14 days straight is grueling. And yes, I said 14 days straight, because I could only print on the printer for about 12 to 16 hours a day, because it's so loud. I also had quite a few layer shifts during the print. You can see the layer shifts were pretty significant when it started the foot rungs, and also at the spots where I changed the filament out. When printing with the hang printer, you end up with a vase-shaped build area. So you can print larger at the bottom, but it gets smaller as it goes up. This model was actually just a little bit too big for my build area, and the line did get hooked on the legs of the stool. So that's what contributed to a lot of the layer shifting. I also noticed shift when the filament needed to be changed, because the last little bit of filament would be hooked on the spool, and it would tug on the lines. Almost all the filament I used on this model was Inland Brand Blue PLA, except for the last bit, which was 3D Solutech Blue PLA. I printed everything at 225 degrees Celsius. I did have some problems with layer adhesion on the top, but when printing at this layer height, you're probably going to have to play around with speeds and temperatures to get things to work correctly. 
I'm definitely going to try this kind of thing again, and I'm really happy with the results that I achieved. A big thanks to Ricky Tanner again for creating this model for me for this print, and a big thanks to the guys over at Fun King 3D, Glenn and Xander, you made this video a lot more fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching. Now the only thing we have left to do is to test this thing out. Is this an awesome print or what?